I'm back once again to talk about Notebook LM. So this is that powerful product that Google has come out with where you can create podcasts as well as some other aspects of what you can do with your sources. I, I, get, I did another video about this where I talked about it step by step as far as how to do those things. But I wanted to give you this update because after playing around with it for a little bit, I found that it's really powerful and there's a lot that you can do with it. The only limitation is your imagination for sure with this. And I also wanted to share some updates that Google themselves has, has pushed out to all of us. And there's now some additional capabilities that you can do with this powerful product. So I'm going to get right into it and do a screen share so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. As be explained before, you go in and when you create your notebook, right, that's the way that you can organize content, it will ask you for your sources of information. So you create your notebook and then you upload your sources of information. When you do that, I want you to be sure to realize that it's all going to be right here on the left hand side. And the cool part is that you can select the sources so you can toggle it on and off as far as what you want it to use in order to interact with the sources, to ask it questions or to create different outputs for you. Within the sources, I want you to notice a few different things. I used a lot of PDFs, but I also used the website. I also went in and I gave it a specific URL for a YouTube video. Now, I wouldn't accept that video because it said that there was an issue and that it couldn't access the actual transcripts. But the transcripts were there, so I don't know if this is some temporary flaw or some issue that it's having. So for right now, I couldn't get it to use a pre-existing YouTube video. The other cool part is that you can rename the source or completely remove the source. So that's a nice little feature. That way you can name it appropriately so that it's easier to interact with. I quickly want to go over this part right here, which is some of the different things that you can do with your content. Because initially when you come in here, it'll give you a quick little summary, which is this part here, but you can go in and make an FAQ like this, a study guide. It has table of contents, but the, the briefing doc is really powerful. It, it's really usable information. And I want you to, to really think about that and that it can quickly and is easily create that study guide for you. So that means that now your student could also create a study guide. Remember that now they have access to this too. So anything that you give them as far as a, a PDF about a book or a book chapter or an article, well, now they could go in and they could create a study guide for this as well. They could create a summary. They could create all sorts of things because now this AI allows them to manipulate the information in that way. So that's something to think about to help you decide as far as the pedagogy that you're going to use, how you're going to create activities, how you're going to do the instructions, how you're going to do different assignments as well. It creates this nice little study guide with all sorts of different questions, again, that your students could use or that you could use. It has an answer key in there, but the big part with all of this is whatever it creates, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're always using proper AI literacy. So we, of course, are going to review the information. And when we do that, we might notice, oh, well, this is different, this is different. But it's still a solution for you, right? Because this could give you a 75% solution as far as the study guide that you wanted to create. This could give you a 80% uh, solution. This allows you to then take it, because all you have to do is copy it and paste it into a Word document, and now you can manipulate it however you want. Now you can fine-tune it to be exactly what you want. Maybe you want to turn this into a Google form that they have to go through and fill out as far as some sort of quiz or some sort of guide that they're creating along the way. All sorts of different possibilities. The power of this is that it quickly generates this type of information for, them, for you to use. Now, I also want to highlight this. I went through and at first when this came out, I really thought that this was simply limited to what it would allow you to create. So those, those pre-custom things, just like the, the study guide or the FAQ. But I went in and I gave it this prompt. I said, create a five question quiz dealing with ethical issues in AI and education. Make it true, false, and give the answers at the end. And sure enough, it did it. So it wasn't limited to any of the, the, the pre-established uh, outputs. No, you can put in whatever you want. I thought that, that that input at the bottom, I thought that was only to ask questions of your sources because that's the real power here is that it uses your specific sources. It's pre-trained, 
so that it can interact with you in plain English. But the power here is that it uses your specific sources and it's not limited to just questions. You can tell it something like this. Hey, create this this aspect of this. So in this case, I said, hey, create a quick uh, five five question quiz for me. But now you can do even more because you can do scaffolding, whatever type of scaffolding you want. You can pose it that type of prompt and it'll access your specific data sources and then give you that response. Now you can copy and paste, do with it whatever you want to. So those are some really cool, powerful benefits of that in itself. But what most of us really gravitate to is the power of the podcast, right? Because it's it's really an enhancement in that it can create this multimodality. Now, the cool, really interesting aspect here is that Google has come out with an additional capability on top of the podcast. So let me show you that. So now when you go in, you'll see that it specifically has two separate buttons, generate and customize. So if you click on customize, now it'll tell you this. It'll say, what should the AI host focus on? It gives you some nice little examples, focus on specific sources. An example that would be cover the Renaissance chapter in the history article, if that was your source. Another example here is focus on specific topic or target a specific audience. That is really powerful because now it's as if you're giving a note to that host, to that podcast host, and you're telling it, hey, I want you to do this, to focus on this, to make it geared in this way, to incorporate this, to talk about this more. That's really powerful. I'm going to show you two examples of what I did to show you of its capabilities. But again, I want you to really think about how this can now be applied in your course, with your topic, with your sources. These are just examples. The, the, the limitations are, are, are limitless, right? Because it's all about your creativity now and how you want to have it focus when it creates these podcasts. So here's some examples. I'm going to initially create a regular podcast directly from those sources. So here it is and listen to this and I'm gonna compare that to some different ones. Welcome to your deep dive into the future of higher education. Yeah. We've got a stack of articles here on how universities are changing. Mm. And let's be honest, it's a little overwhelming trying to get through it all right. It is, yeah. So we're gonna help you cut through the noise really extract the need to know insights, the stuff that'll make you sound super smart at your next dinner party. Exactly. But more importantly, we'll try to connect the dots on what these shifts actually mean for you. So for one case, I went in and I said, explain this to students who are majoring in education. They are sophomores at the university and are not very techie. Focus on the skills that students need to develop, to be developing, and how universities will need to adapt to address those needs, skills. So let's listen to what it's come up with and notice how this is different than the original source. Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. And today we're tackling something that's, well, it's pretty crucial for anyone who's studying to be a, a teacher right now, especially if you're say a sophomore in college and maybe you know, not exactly a tech whiz. And that's perfectly okay. Because we're gonna be talking about the future of higher education and let's face it, things are changing fast. Yeah, they really are. And we've gone through a stack of recent reports on this, so you don't have to... Exactly. So think of this as your cheat sheet, right? Exactly. You're talking global trends, cutting edge tech, all of it. So that's interesting. You see how it totally modifies itself so that it addresses the customization that you gave it. So that's a really powerful tool because now we can have that podcast be slightly more focused, slightly changed to better address what we're going for with the creation of the podcast in the first place, right? So this powerful new additional modality. I want to give you one more example, right? Because again, there's so many different possibilities here. So check this one out. So here I say, explain it to my fourth grade elementary class. They are 10 years old. Use simple terms. I want them to understand the importance of AI literacy and how valuable learning new technology will be to their future. Hey there, deep divers. Today we're diving into something really, really cool, something that's changing the world as we speak, and it's called artificial intelligence, or AI for short. And we're going to break it down so you can explain it to anyone, even your fourth graders. That's right. We're talking about AI in a way that would make sense even to our 10-year-old selves. Okay, so imagine... Uh, Imagine a computer program that learns like you do. You know how you get smarter and better at things over time? Well, AI is kind of like that. It can solve problems and create things and even make decisions. Again, you can see the modification. You can see how it totally changed so as to make it more simple, so as to make it geared towards fourth graders so that a 10-year-old could understand it. And again, I can go up and down with the focus 
I can give it more specific information as to what I want it to be addressing more completely within the presentation. Uh, each one of these only took less than 10 minutes for it to fully create. So it's really powerful and really easy for me to make multiple versions of the podcast, whatever is needed for my class, whatever is needed for my topic to help my students really understand the content. One more thing, one more update that I wanted to share with you about this powerful tool, Google Notebook LM. A big thing that was expressed by Google Labs VP, Josh Woodward, is that there's going to be now a a business version of this. It's going to be called Notebook LM Business. Right now, they just announced it. They haven't shown it. There's no explanation of what it's going to be, but he did state that there will be some aspects of pricing and that will come later this year. So before 2025, they're gonna talk about the pricing information. And it says that this is going to have additional features that will help businesses, will help universities, and all sorts of different possibilities there. You can go to this website, notebooklm.google slash business, and in there you can click to join the pilot. When you click on that, it'll give you some more information saying that this is specifically for business, for educational institutions, other organizations. You can click on that and then sign up. So I went ahead and signed up for it. I haven't received any information yet, so as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Uh, I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, right, that what this means is that there'll be a, a paid version that will have many more capabilities, many more features that you can use, such as different languages that it can be created in, such as using different voices, different types of modifications, how you broke it up, uh, expressing how long you want it to be exactly. All these things I think would be a great implementation for a business version of this. My hope is that the free version will still remain free, at least in some some way so that everyone else can still continue to use this powerful tool. Only time will tell. We'll, we'll see. Let's hope. And uh, together we'll figure this whole thing out. So thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. Please like and share so that we can grow this channel so that we can get more people part of our community of practice so that we can learn together. And remember, learning is for life.